Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Selby series. Selby is one of 11 subdivisions of the county of North Yorkshire. It's made up of 74 civil parishes, a lot of which are very small. Which one are we in this week? Okay, today in the district of Selby, I've got one that's a little bit bigger than the last one, Catterton, which you saw. And Nikki is with me for the third Selby episode in a row. Now this one, before I came here, I had to do a bit of research on how to pronounce it because spelt H-E-A-L-A-U-G-H, -A -A it can be pronounced a couple of ways. Thankfully, Wikipedia has got uh, one of those IPA, uh, what's the actual thing, International Phonetic Alphabet, is it? Is that what that stands for? I don't know. Anyway, on Wikipedia, it shows you how to pronounce it. This is Helor. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Helaw is another tiny settlement with civil parish status in the far northern reaches of the Selby district of North Yorkshire. Much like Catterton, this will be a short episode. The village is about three miles north northeast of Tadcaster and shares a parish council with Catterton, consisting of five members, four represent Helaw and one represents Catterton. It lies just over two miles west of Askham Richard, meaning this is close to the boundary of the city of York, but it's also only one and a half miles east of Wighill, which falls within Harrogate. According to the dictionary of place names, Helaw means high forest glade or clearing. It appears in the Doomsday Book as Haylage and is believed to have existed since Saxon times. A short distance to the east of the village is a stream called Dam Dyke, which flows via Catterton Beck and the Foz into the River Wharf near Bolton Percy. The village is very much a linear affair once again. Our route takes us from Abbey Lane in the south up to the Church of St John the Evangelist in the north and then back from whence we came. In the 1820s, the village was the property of a B. Brooksbank Esquire. Writings from that time tell us Helor possessed a good carriage road through its centre, leading from Weatherby to York. It also possessed a school. The building in shot here on the other side of the road is an old schoolhouse. Helor has no school now, nor does it have any shop or retail services, except this. Something of a rarity in a village this small, Helor has a post office, which is still very much open, albeit only on two weekday mornings, those being Monday and Tuesday. Just before our next landmark, it should be noted that Helor is the name of not just one, but two villages in North Yorkshire. The other one you can find in the Richmondshire district. Helor's war memorial is a tall, plain octagonal cross on a square plinth and four-step base. The whole monument is enclosed within a low stone wall with a pebbled surface inside. To get to the church, we have to walk up this gravel drive up a slight incline past Helor Old Hall. This house was where Oliver Smith once lived, he of Samuel Smith Brewery in Tadcaster. On the way up to the church, we pass a pillar, which is in fact a memorial to the Jackson family, seemingly an important local name. The church here is a fascinating one. It has a hole said to have been made by a Cromwellian trooper firing off his musket on his way to Marston Moor in 1644. And it's also said that just north of the church, there used to be a castle. 
That's according to Leyland, who wrote an account of his travels through England. He visited Helor in Henry VIII's reign. The stone has likely been reused in some of the buildings in the village. Check out these wooden crosses. A long time ago in the Everton episode of Bassett Law, crosses like these we saw in that episode. They are of course here thanks to it being Easter time. The main door has some very striking carvings. A similar set of carvings can be found in nearby Wighill. They are one of several known as the Yorkshire School, created between the 1130s and the 1150s. You can't deny there's quite a fabulous view up here too. Here's Nicky taking in some of that fabulous North Yorkshire countryside you can see from up here. So Healor is just like Catterton in that it's another long, thin, linear village. There is something here though that we can't access that's not in the main village and that's Healor Priory. I'm going to give you a special section on that because it's on private land. I would love to go to it, but I can't get to it. Uh, or at least I can't drive to it. I think there's a bridleway which passes it, but it's far too far to walk. So here comes a special section on Helor Priory. Helor Priory, which is more accurately called Helor Park Priory, was established near the village at the site now called Helor Manor Farm. The Priory of St John the Evangelist was established in 1218 by Jordan de Santa Maria and his wife Alice, the granddaughter of Bertram Hadgett. It was later acquired by Stamp Brooksbank, MP and Governor of the Bank of England, and it descended through the Brooksbank family to Sir Edward Clitheroe Brooksbank, 1st Baronet. Two of his three sons were killed in the First World War and the other in a motorcycle accident. Helor was disposed of around this time. The remains of the Priory served for some time as a manor house, after which it became a farmhouse, with parts of the monastic building incorporated into the later buildings. A moated enclosure surrounding the building and associated fish ponds belong to either the monastic or manor house period. The present building is a two-storey construction of magnesian limestone ashlar with Welsh slate roof and brick chimney stacks, and it's Grade 2 listed. Notable people associated with Helor include Thomas Wharton and John Parker, the latter being a Whig politician. Both are buried in the village. There's also Mark Westerby, who unlike Parker or Wharton, is still very much alive. He's a British strongman competitor and he was born in the village. This road here will take you to Wighill across the border and into Harrogate. The site of Helor Park Priory is also along here, up a private track to the left between the villages. Now we're walking back to where we began and Nicky spotted a cross on this gate. This is the old vicarage. In 1871, Vicar Charles Voicy was deprived of the living for his heterodox views. Once again, the village is on the number 37 bus route, the same one that serves Bilborough and Catterton. It runs between Tadcaster and York. And that's just about it for Helor, although there was one final nugget of hilarity from Mrs TVI regarding a house on the corner of Abbey Lane. It's all kind of... Kind of like an O2 contract, it's full of bolt-ons. <laughs> <laughs> I only bring Nicky with me for the humour, I'm telling you. An O2 extension. <laughs> the house is like an O2 contract, and I quote, it's got so many bolt-ons. <laughs> Unbelievable. You've just got to love Nicky's humour at times. Almost back at the car, I debated with myself about whether or not this one should have a picture bit, eventually deciding it was too small. So I've gone for the old outro in the car um, version today with Nicky. Yeah, I need to sit down. I've done <laughs> quite a lot of steps so far. How many was it? Um, 6,300. 6,000 something for the three villages we've done so far. Yeah, so the last three villages you've seen in uh, this series, 6,300 steps apparently according to Nicky's Fitbit. Um, so yeah, if you fancy coming out here to this part of this part of the world and you want to, to walk around like we have, that's sort of the amount of steps, if you follow our routes, you can be expected to do. Time for me to move on to my next one in Selby. And uh, yeah, it's been quite enjoyable having Nicky with me for these last three episodes. I'd, I'd sit and, with that view up the, the top of the hill. The oh yeah. Day. Oh yeah. Gorgeous. Absolutely brilliant. If you come all, to here, All Hilo, we needed was really was for it to be a bit sunnier, a flask of tea, and some sandwiches and we could have sat there all day. I think we could, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a cracking view from that churchyard if you come to Hilo, sit on that bench and enjoy it for a while. I know we did. Oh, definitely. This has been the Parish of Hilo, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. And I'm out.